unbelievable. It's crazy. This is bananas. I don't even know where to begin. I mean, honestly, there's so many different little things. The more you look at it, the more you see. Yeah. That's better. Perfect. So satisfying. <laughs> I'm wondering what's next. Like we have to put the lighting in and then we're really gonna be able to like make it pop. Hey, what's up everybody? Ed the Palm Professor here. We're in the heart of Chicago, just on the north side. And we are here at Aquarium Info with Jamie. Trevor's in back. We're just starting to unload. <laughs> There's the van. <laughs> we are loaded up with all the rock. Here's Trevor. How's it going? We have all the different pieces and parts. We have our flex PVC, our drainage panels, these beautiful hand-picked moss rocks, and then we have those cool stumps that we grabbed. And then here are some of our aquatic plants and all the different parts. This is gonna be the entire structure for the tank. This is some really cool pieces of wood. We got it from, it actually came out of Michigan. It's cedar, so it is really rot resistant. It's gonna stand up, but just look at all the character. It's got that entire root mass on it. So the idea with this is to create all types of little pockets and caves and stuff like that for the animals to kind of hide inside. But what I love about working with this is not only do we have places for the animals, but then we have all these plant pockets up on top, mm -hmm. which is really gonna make this pop. It's amazing. Now what we got to do, rinse it and then bring it inside. All right, so we have our two pieces now. So it was one giant one, cut it in half to allow it to fit inside. The other thing we did, we just rinsed it down. You can see all the loose stuff that kind of came off over here. Just let this dry for a bit so we don't make a mess inside but just some beautiful, beautiful, beautiful pieces. Totally looking forward to playing around with this thing to make this all come together. Uh, the driftwood is outside drying off. We rinsed it all down. We have our moss rocks inside, which are just beautiful. I mean, just check out the rugged characteristics of all these things. What I like about working with this native limestone, this actually comes out of Missouri. And this is gonna help with the pH and the hardness of the water. So we're trying to mimic the actual habitat of the axolotl. This is gonna do that job for us. So it's gonna help to raise that pH and it's gonna bring that calcium carbonate hardness up a little bit which is going to be beneficial for the animals so here's the beautiful tank that we have set up we're gonna have a waterfall over on the one corner over here it's gonna kind of cascade down and then we have that big incredible piece of driftwood that's gonna kind of break up the monotony of this just big blank wall behind us it's gonna be some lighting probably hanging from the ceiling we're gonna to have to figure that stuff out we have a lot of details still to figure out here but we want to have lighting coming down and then we're gonna load this up with just lush aquatic vegetation as well as terrestrials because that's gonna mimic the habitat so you've heard me talk Talk about this a thousand times biomimicry it's a great great way to design as well as build mimicking the natural habitats and environments of the animals makes them feel more at home and when you have an animal that feels comfortable in their environment they're going to be healthier and they're going to live a long long prosperous life our next steps right now we're waiting for the driftwood to dry we're going to get our biofalls position the other thing that we're going to do back over here on this back side we're going to make a little bit wider of a ledge back here and that's going to hold all of our aqua blocks in place so you've seen me use these things before these are those structural units this is going to create a ledge for us that we can build off of so we can bring all that vegetation in place now some of the plants that we have all types of aquatic as well as terrestrial plants that are going to be at home in a saturated environment all right trevor what's going to be our next step here so we got our waterfall filter this is basically the biological filtration for the axolotl tank basically it's going to create some elevation inside is a big spillway so that's kind of the part that creates the waterfall and then inside of here we have a mesh bag that the bio balls will go in and a filtration pad so it'll help take some of the stuff out of the water and keep it nice and healthy and clean bio balls so what makes those basically filter media so basically the surface area on here will colonize all the bacteria that is going to help to sustain the ecosystem they're actually created with a high surface area count for the size that they are so it works really well for what we're going to be using them for
So what we're working on right now, just increasing the load bearing capacity of the actual cabinet. So just looking at some of the construction, we have three quarter inch plywood, which is good and solid, but there's a little bit of concern about some racking or something going back and forth. Remember, this is gonna weigh a thousand or 2000 pounds, a full ton of weight on top of this. Once it's full of water, all the rock, all the plants, all the wood and all that structure. So we gotta make sure we transfer that all the way down into the floor. The extra precaution of doing this Easy, easy fix. Again, all this stuff was just built. This is typical construction world. Always modifying, always making our changes to make sure that everything's gonna function in the end. We have our biofilter located, drainage panels down here on the bottom. So remember, these, this is that hollow structure, allows for good water flow underneath, but it's also gonna protect the tank itself because we're gonna put a lot of weight on this. We're gonna have the, the big giant stumps and the rocks and things like that. So this is gonna take some of that pressure points away from this. So that's a safety factor. We have our piping connected, so everything's staying inside the tank, which I love. So that way that there is no issues or anything, everything is self-contained inside of this one tank system. We have our pump located over here. We have our aqua box. This is just creating a little structural void space for us. It's gonna hold the submersible pump. And then we also have this filter media. So you look at the, all those slots and stuff inside, that means that this pump can handle anything that fits through those little slots. So what we wanna do is we wanna try to pre-filter the water before it goes in. So that way it extends the life of the pump because the last thing we wanna do is have extended maintenance processes. So this is gonna make their maintenance a little bit easier. Now our next step is gonna be coming in with our rubber membrane, just like we do on our ponds and waterfalls and things like that. That's gonna create a waterproof barrier along this back wall. Then we're gonna start layering in all the driftwood and the stone and mosses and everything. And then that's gonna create that beautiful lush garden for us. So Jamie, what we want to do is we're going to use some of the waterfall foam to block off some of the areas for the axolotls. We came up with this concept 25 plus years ago. So I remember starting out with Greg, we used to use mortar. Then we went over to Great Stuff. Problem with Great Stuff is it's yellow. So we started working with the manufacturer and we added carbon black to it, which makes it UV stabilized. And it also mm -hmm. kind of blends in with everything. Yeah. So I'm going to leave you with a couple of these guns as well as some of these extra cans of foam. I think you could use it on a lot of projects. Thank you. Yeah. yeah. That's better. Perfect. Wow. wow. So satisfying. <laughs> <laughs> so last night, you gave me a call. You were evaluating the stone on the left of the waterfall. Trevor and I were not big fans of it. And I know after you looked at it for a while, you kind of called me up with the same thought, right? Yeah. It's a little bit too big. I think we're losing a little bit too much of the volume in the surface area for the axolotls. Right now, we're trying to find an alternative piece, something a bit smaller, thinner. It won't be as intrusive, and it'll do the same function that yeah. we're looking for. Yeah. Last night after getting off the phone with Jamie, I called Trevor. We went on a hunt <laughs> to try to find some other rocks. I pulled this one out of my Hobbit House waterfall out of a retaining wall. Trevor was scouring around at the office, but all the stuff we have at the shop is huge. So we're going to try to manipulate this one. And worst case scenario, you said we can do plants, right? Yeah. Worst case, we'll do some plants, disguise the waterfall, and maintain that area of swim. Awesome. Well, I like options. I also love the creative process. So we're trying to make the, the, the best feature aesthetically as well as functionally for the animals. I think, yeah. I mean, actually function for the animals should take precedence. Absolutely. So let's focus on that. All right. Let's do it.
spoke with Dustin, Dustin's fish tanks. Good friend, I know you've seen him over at Aquashell and everything. I told him about the tank, I gave him the dimensions, just let him pick whatever was good this time of the year. I gave him a few of my favorites, Trevor gave him a few of his favorites, and then other than that, he just kind of threw a bunch of stuff together for us. So let's see what we got. So what we're doing is we're gonna create a little plant pocket. We have our small little aquatic planters. So this is a fabric type of a bag. This is gonna allow moisture to go through it. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna pack moss around it. And then Trevor's holding this incredible pitcher plant. So it's a carnivorous plant. And this is the exact habitat where it would be found. They love decaying debris and stuff like that. So this is a piece of cedar, but it's gonna be the perfect environment for this small plant. And then we're talking about, Trevor mentioned, not only one here, but doing one in the back as well, since we have a duo of them. And then we're gonna keep going around. We have to hide up our pumping system and work our way all the way to the top. Jamie, so we're at a critical point again, another one. Now we're ready to do the terrestrial plantings. These are kind of transitional plants. This one is a true aquatic. These ones kind of like it in a damp situation. So what Trevor did was we have an aquatic plant pot and then we have these little pieces of fabric which are gonna act as a wick. So that'll go down inside of the water and that'll draw up enough moisture to keep these guys damp enough. Mm -hmm. The other thing that we're doing is we're adding in a specialized soil mixture. It's designed to mimic an alluvial soil. So alluvial soils are those areas Areas where floodplains occur. Fast moving water comes down rivers, it churns up the river bottom, brings organic sands, mm -hmm. silt, clay, all that stuff, and it deposits it. So the most productive farm farmland in the world is usually found along river systems, and it's because of that soil. We're adding it in specifically to increase the nutrient value, so these plants are really, really happy. Nice. <laughs> this is so, gorgeous. Yeah, so this guy's gonna get four to five feet tall. Wow. It does have some beautiful flowers. We're thinking of putting it back behind that incredible piece of wood, and then wow. we're gonna start scaling down from that point. That's amazing. So this is activated pond carbon. We're gonna put this into this mesh bag. This is gonna help us remove the tannins from the water. So since we have so much wood, that's gonna cause the water to become a little bit yellow. So this will help us clear that away. We'll kind of hide this so it's out of sight, but it's doing a lot of work in the back end. Once that's full, then I can take it and put it in the biofilter and then we're gonna finish with aquatic plants on top of that. Beautiful. Awesome. just put this whole manifold together. This is going to distribute water through all these different tubes for the living wall. So what we want to do now is connect this up to the other end that's feeding the waterfall and we'll steal away a certain portion of it for all the different points. That's crazy. Unbelievable. It's crazy. This is bananas. I'm wondering what's next. Like we have to put the lighting in and then we're really gonna be able to like make it pop. It's gonna look insane. Jamie, two days. Looks phenomenal. We did it. It was fantastic working with you. Obviously Trevor standing over here on unfortunately on the outside edge. Uh, <laughs> instrumental, just all of us working together. Normally I'm doing outdoor ponds. Done a few indoor stuff. I've always done fish tanks. I've always had it my entire life. So I love building stuff like this. But a lot of the philosophies that we use, biomimicry techniques, looking at nature, replicating natural ecosystems, indoors, outdoors, it's the same thing. Honestly, this is a little bit more challenging indoors because it's tight. Like we have a tight space to work with. 
But I want to welcome you to the Aquascape Lifestyle Pond Professor Sure. Thank you so much. Beautiful. I think my favorite part still remains on the right hand side here. Okay. We have this little like waterfall effect coming down the tree here along the moss and it's just so peaceful. I was saying earlier if you could zoom in it almost feels like you're in the jungle and I love the waterfall. I'm very excited to get all the axolotls in. Can't beat the scenery. Can't beat the scenery for them. <laughs> <laughs> 